Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. We're going to start out with the angle of elevation. The definition is that it's the angle measured from the horizontal to the line of sight. When we're talking about the horizontal, we're talking about a line that is basically on the ground. So you're going to see the word base or ground and that's what we're talking about is this line right here. And the line of sight is again, if you were to basically look up from this horizontal, look up at something in the sky, that would create this line of sight. So perhaps we would look at a plane. Okay, that was really cool. Anyway, back to business. Let's say, for example, we had an air traffic controller and he was looking up at an airplane and we knew that this air traffic controller or this tower was 5,000 feet from the ground to the plane and we wanted to know what this height was right here so we wanted to know what this um, this vertical height to the airplane from the ground was well we can use some trig and again I forgot to mention that this angle of elevation is 32 degrees and anyway, we can use some trig. This would be tangent because from this angle of elevation, we have an opposite and we have an adjacent. So we're going to do tangent 32 equals opposite over adjacent, which would be x over 5,000. And then to solve for this, we would multiply both sides by 5,000 to get that x by itself. And after putting that in your calculator, you would have 3,124 feet. So this airplane would be 3,124 feet from the ground. Now let's talk about the angle of depression. And it is the angle measured from the horizontal to the line of sight. The definition looks almost, or it actually looks the same. The only difference is that when we're talking about the angle of depression, the horizontal is in the sky. So it's above the ground where on the angle of depression it was on the ground. And the line of sight is if we were to look down from this horizontal that's again above the ground, if we were to look down at something, that creates this angle of depression. So let's put in an example. Let's say we have a tower and that we have this creepy looking alien ant guy standing on the tower looking down. Of course we know this wouldn't happen in real life. I'm going to give you a lot of examples in class that are real life examples. So let's say this alien ant looking thing looks down and he spots a fire and of course he wants to call the fire department and the angle of depression is 28 degrees and he knows that the tower is 40 feet tall so that this distance right here would be 40 feet and he wants to know how far the fire is from the tower so we're going to give this our an X so that he can call it a fire department and they can put this fire out so we could use tangent again because from this angle we have an opposite and an adjacent so we would set it up tangent 28 equals 40 over X and remember if the X is on the bottom that we can swap diagonally over the equal sign and rewrite this so we would put the x up here and the tangent 28 down here we would rewrite this as 40 over tangent 28 and put that in your calculator and you would get that this is approximately 75 feet so he could tell the fire department exactly where that fire is located now I'm going to tell you something that's kind of kind of mess with your mind because it's going to be a little bit confusing but in the end, it'll make things a lot easier. If we were to draw a parallel line from this line right here, and we would draw another parallel line right here, we would create a rectangle. And remember from last semester that if we have parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this angle here is 28 degrees, this would also be 28 degrees here. And this would be 40 feet here. And this would be an X. What we've done is we've created two congruent triangles. So the angle of elevation 
and the angle of depression are basically the same thing. So we could have set this up and drawn it like this and come up with the same conclusion that this is 75 feet. So what I want you to do from here on out is actually draw um, your angle of depression as an angle of elevation so that you don't get it wrong because what I see people do all the time is they put the angle of depression here and it actually goes here and and I see people miss this all the time and a sure way to get this right is to draw it as the angle of elevation instead. So we could have drawn the same information, we could have drawn it this way and set it up the exact same way and we would have come up to the same conclusion. So remember that the angle of elevation and the angle of depression because we can create those congruent triangles and alternate interior angles are congruent, they are the same thing. I'll see you guys in class.